Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your Cape Crusader Cody, and we are keeping it geekly with our two new friends. Well, one's returning, one's new <laughs> of a Diamond <laughs> Comics. We have Ob, our returning guest, and yeah. Jay, hey. uh, the hey. new friend. Welcome to the stream. How are you both doing Hi. today? Doing great. Doing great. Yeah. I always tell people that if they don't believe I have a twin, finally get to see here. <laughs> I was going to say, it's so hard to distinguish. If, if there wasn't for the names in the yeah. corner, I wouldn't know who I was talking to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, Ob, you've, you've already been on the stream. Let's go ahead and give a small recap of who you are, because what we'll do is we'll have a video pop up of our last uh, interview, and then we'll move on to Jay. And Jay, uh, give us a little bit yeah. more of an in-depth breakdown, too. So, Ob, we'll start with you. Sure. Uh, cool. I'm the creator behind American Prince. Um, uh, which is on Global Comics, and um, it's doing really well, uh, and uh, I'm really happy <laughs> with that. It's, <laughs> it's a vampire supernatural drama, but it uh, touches on a lot of a lot of stuff that mm -hmm. is just sort of beyond the genre. And I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> and then uh, we also have uh, the melting pot as well, correct? Right, Melting Pot Riot, yes. And he helps, he kind of like, he's my soundboard on that. I do a lot of the work on it, but he's sort of like, you know, we, we sort of bounce ideas off. The, the brainstorming, uh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay, so Jay, I, yeah. Jay, give us a little bit about yourself too. Uh, give us uh, some of your previous works and then let's lead into uh, the Melting Pot Riot. Well, um, I worked on a series that I'm hoping to wrap up soon called Becoming Henry. From uh, based on these books called uh, Shattered Lives by uh, Rissa Blakely, and um, and so that's where I got kind of back into doing it. I started hand uh, drawing that one, and then we moved into digital and sold it on Amazon. And um, before that, uh, I was I was I was a painter, so I did a lot of uh, commissioned paintings and some art. We, we both did some some art shows and stuff. Yeah. I started paint, selling paintings at 16 wow. at a head shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> head shop record store. And they, awesome. they loved it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they would pay me and then I'd just buy records and, and CDs and stuff. Yeah. And turn around I would have bought something money. else at a head shop. Dang. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> so uh, give us a, a, a little bit about uh, Happy Go Gothy as well. That was another uh, series that you're a part of, correct? Yeah, I'm the artist on that, and it's, it's a really great partnership. Um, Justin, who is the creator and writer, he just let me run with it sometimes because I can think of stuff that he wouldn't think of. Like the first episode, I used some really bright colors, and he, sh he wouldn't have thought about the neon colors, but the neon colors just worked really well with the, with the darkness and stuff. And, and so sometimes he just lets me go with it. He lets me, you know, uh, he just kind of, sometimes he just gives me a loosest, script imaginable just lets me go <laughs> yeah justin, justin is one yeah. of the best collaborators we've ever had yeah. uh, we've been friends with him forever uh, yeah. almost 10 years um, yeah he got us back into comics because he believed in us <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our own thing, yeah. so and, jay you know, uh oh go ahead oh i'm sorry uh, we've also worked with a bunch of other we i've done uh, book cover illustrations and illustrations mm -hmm. inside novels for other authors as well yeah so that's we, we so are you doing that are you mainly uh, an artist or do you uh, do uh, the writing as well for uh, the Melting Pot Riot? I'm a writer as well. We actually wrote novels. The American yeah. Prince stories are based from mm -hmm. novel series yeah. that we wrote yes. together. So that's something- Which that are we... available on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> on Amazon. Yeah. So Malachi uh, started in yeah. books. From the um, Night, Night yeah. Boys series. And real quick too, right here is the link to read uh, the Melting Pot Riot on Global Comics for free as well. Uh, there's yeah. uh, what, five issues? Yes, there's a prologue and four issues, and I'm working on the next issue. It's going to be a little late. It's going to be on the 10th, but it's going to be an extra big edition. So it'd be like mm -hmm. 20 pages, I think. So, so. do you uh, both uh, like kind of like bounce off each other in terms of like uh, motivation? Because uh, you're a writer artist as well, right? Like, so do you like both like like you're like, hey, I got my page done. No. It's like, oh well, I need to get yeah. my page yeah. done now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, argue. I do. We argue about <laughs> techniques because yes. we do things totally different. Yeah. Like our, the, all, the way I do my lettering's different. We argue about it. <laughs> we do. Yeah, we do. So, yeah. what's that creative process look like between you two when you're trying to like iron it out and and, and figure out a panel or uh, the way lettering should look like? Um, we decided that each one does their thing as long as it yep. looks uniform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just like 
uh, when we're it's like, if it's something that he's like letting me run with, uh-huh. then he just lets me do however I've got it set up for this mm-hmm. works for me. And then I just give him the stuff. And uh, sorry, my phone. <laughs> no, you're fine. No worries. And then like, I since some of his characters are an American prince, I'll yeah. show him character design to be like, is this okay? Is this what yeah. you want them to look like? Because, yeah. you know. You like characters from uh, Happy Go Gothy or uh, the no, Melty uh, characters from the novels. novels. Oh, the novels. Uh, okay, the okay. Story. Yeah, Francis and Christy and Kiddo. Yeah. I have to go to him and be like, "Does this look like them?" <laughs> so, how many yeah. uh, novels did you end up uh, putting out? Five. Oh, yeah, I think five. Yeah. yeah, like one of them is a crossover with his characters and my characters, yeah. and then the rest of them are. I started them first, and the, this they, that's and a vampire like hunter series and then he would we would do input together so yeah. we would just uh, talk about things it usually goes i was thinking that's usually when it starts <laughs> what if we and then and then it goes from there <laughs> so how was it taking yeah. that from a like a novel series and putting it into like a comic web comic type of format so um yeah I, we experimented with that with the halloween anthology right. uh 2020 to 2021 so those were the experimentations of if we could take and adapt the yeah. novels so uh, early uh, short story with malachi is in there and quantum immortality with uh, raleigh is in mm-hmm. that and i just recently redrew those and put them out as halloween prints um so, but there's two versions so there's the the old one and then the new yeah. one but um that was the test can we make yeah. these? and yeah. uh the anthology was the big test yeah i i, I a lot of the stuff that like uh the idea some of the ideas from that and characters that are in Melting Pot Right started out in short stories. So, but I love the shortcut of the visual aspect of comics and that I can, instead of like taking a full page to describe something, mm-hmm. it's right there in one panel, you yeah. know. So How did it uh, feel like seeing your characters come to life like that? It's really is like, it's exciting because it's like, wait, <laughs> you know, we did that and it looks mm-hmm. great and people love it, you know. Yeah. It, it, and, and so it just, it, it feels really good to see it like that and to go like, this this actually works, you know. <laughs> Out of all these false starts we've always had, but this is like, you know, um, really working. And, and I just, I, I it looks really the most professional work we've done mm-hmm. to date yeah. after oh, years yeah. of working on it. There's my yeah. cat coming in to bother you to get <laughs> yeah. some pets as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, give us a little bit of how you came into the Melting Pot Riot. Now, this was a really yeah. interesting read. Uh, I had the opportunity, I think, to read the first like three chapters or three issues. And uh, I, I really love just how deep uh, you got involved with it. It's actually based yeah. on some uh, real life events, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. yes, it's inspired by two real stone, pre-stone wall riots, Compton's Cafeteria Riot and the uh, Cooper's Donut Riot. And the only written witness to the Cooper's Donut is in a novel called City of Night by John Ricci. Oh, Ricci, I think his, his name is pronounced. And I read that in my 20s. And, and um, he was arrested in the, in the Cooper's Donut Riot. And um, so his is like one of the only witnesses to that. And we actually visited the location where Cooper's Donut actually stood at once stood when we were in los angeles last time and um in every pride i think i'm gonna bring this story back i, I want to have a trans front and center story uh that they're the heroes you know mm-hmm. these these people are gonna get together and they're gonna be the ones that to have their story told um especially after the movie there was a movie called stonewall that came out a few years ago and they they put a, a fictional character as the lead, you know, a white kid, you know, and a white male, and they took away the trans women, you know, and shoved them off to the side. I said, I'm not going to do that. We're going to tell the story with trans women and with the people that started the riots, you know, because their story is important. I really loved how this started too. You know, we uh, started Mm -hmm. um, in in the future basically, and you know, we have these two individuals and. They see this grandma on the bench yeah. uh, wearing where a pin that says, I love someone that, that's trans. And they're like, well, who exactly. do you love as trans? <laughs> yeah. and, and the grandma's like, myself. And I was like, yeah. that's awesome. That was such yeah. an awesome way to start it. Those two individuals are actually based on friends of mine. Yeah. 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 And I asked, a bunch of our like, friends are in there. <laughs> and I put you in here as this person is. It's my friend Liam and, and his partner. And, um, and then 
the marshal, the, the person that introduces yeah. her to the crowd, is one of my friends. That's Marshall the historian. Marshall the historian, who does these pride, uh, yeah. you know, shows and stuff. And and then, so I I dotted a whole bunch of my friends in this pride. Alex this, and Bina. This, yeah. yeah. It, I wanted it to be some place where people I know, this would be the Pride Festival I wanted to go to, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, sometimes it's not always as inclusive. So I was going to make it an inclusive, wonderful Pride event. You know? So it was I like also, a Pride. Now, yeah. after talking to you a little bit and, and kind of like reflecting back, I, I mm -hmm. like how it's, uh, you know, th that uh, this grandma was like the last survivor of the riot. So yeah. I thought that that's interesting that, you know, you said um, in yeah. that novel that that's the only, you know, uh, yeah. recollection of it. So I thought that was an interesting, you know, was uh, there any correlation between that? Um, well, she, she's not technically the only survivor, but she's the only survivor they know. She's one of the few survivors. Mm. And, it, and I definitely didn't want it to be one of those barrier gay tropes. It's just sort of like time has passed, you know? So some of these people were older, so they're gonna pass away from natural causes and things like that. So this this was not going to be, no one, you know, they were gonna live to the end, you know? Uh, this wasn't gonna be either the, oh, the, the, the queer people died, you know? <laughs> they were gonna yeah, be. yeah, yeah. But um, I loved the idea of her being this wonderful little old granny, this sweet mm -hmm. little granny, but she's got this past of being this riot, you know, you know, leader in this riot, you know? <laughs> hey, you know, where I'm at in the story, I'm like right at, I think, the beginning yeah. part of it. I don't even think I got to the riot part. So uh, yeah, I'm really interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really uh, interested to see like what her character ends up doing. Um, yeah. Now, um, I did s run into a uh, character of importance, uh, the one on the uh, the cover, uh, Charlie. Uh, can you give us yeah. a little bit about Char Charlie's role in the story? Yeah, he actually started in a previous short story called Swallow the Anchor, where he's like 24 years old. So it's really early in his years as a drifter. And I decided to pull him in and put him into this story as a 40 something year old drifter now so he so he's just kind of someone that just drifted through life and and um you know he he uh he, he is a bisexual man but he loves women you know his he forms romantic relationships with women so that's important for his relationships with these trans women because i want to reinforce that heterosexual men and bisexual men in relationships with trans women are still heterosexual and still bisexual um because they're women that they're in relationships with so i i thought having charlie in there as the drifter he's kind of like the the father of the the whole little mm -hmm. melting pot family and he just like seemed like this wonderful little anchor you know to just sort of like you know, he he's everybody's friend. You know, I really and liked. Uh, he's there his, for everyone. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. I was gonna say oh, I really okay. liked his interaction with the waitress as well, uh, because a lot of that is reflected. Uh, there's uh, not e even any. He doesn't even like. Yeah. pop up a wink about uh, her being trans if anything right. uh, he's so supportive like hey if if uh exactly. your potential uh you know suitor doesn't want you because <laughs> of that he, he yeah he's a chump like hit yeah. me up and then exactly. even even she's like well i would <laughs> but i don't know if my, my pops would appreciate that like yeah. so i thought that was pretty funny like that yeah. was the main focus was whether or not her parents were gonna like him instead of yeah. you know the the fact that no. she was trans yeah exactly yeah protective family i wanted her to have a wonderful supportive family so this is something that her family has totally accepted her from a young age you know and some people have that i know mm -hmm. some wonderful parents of trans children that are like totally there for them and i wanted to have that reflected too. So for every family that loses their child because they reject them, you have families that totally embrace them. Like we're going to help you, you know. And that's what Nina's got. Mm -hmm. I have one of my other cats coming here. <laughs> Dusty. <laughs> And uh, another uh, big thing is this was all based in like the 60s. So that was a whole yes. different era in itself. Like, exactly. you know, this was even more of. I don't even know how you would want to word it, but it was uh, something society wasn't like, I, I guess, accepting of. Uh, it is exactly. the, the So, I, yeah. I mean, a lot of that is reflected, too. And I thought, you know, um, this like is like a nice like little glimpse back onto history itself, like with how yes. trans and the trans community were, were treated. Yes. I, I wanted to, you know, I, I made sure that I did my research and stuff, um, plus, you know, knowing people. Um, you know, hearing stories and, and doing as much research, knowing how it was um, back then to, to make sure it was authentic, um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, still have a supportive feeling so that it's not all trauma. You know, you've got, you've got people that are 
do this loving each other, you know, and, and they're they're a little family, you know, if they've got family or they don't, you know, and different backgrounds. So I wanted I wanted this wonderful, diverse, uh, wide range of of queer people uh, represented, you know, that get left out of story. We, you know, some of the some of you know, to also tell the difference between a drag queen and a trans woman, you know, like Taffy is a drag queen, but, uh, you know, and Dottie is a cross dress, which is different, you know. That and they're all different. an umbrella. Yeah, yeah, the umbrella. They're all different from me and Sylvie, you know. They're people in different phases of their transition because it wasn't always easy to get, you know, the medical care and stuff back then either. Mm -hmm. So um, some inspiration from um, some, some icons like Marsha P. Johnson um, is definitely an inspiration um, on Sylvie, um, that type of character. You know, I wanted her I just, to be kind of like that. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, that's right where I left off reading was uh, right with uh, Sylvie's like introduction and yeah. uh, like with the police and everything. I was like, ooh, this yeah. is getting good. This is getting <laughs> yeah. really good. I, 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 yeah, I wanted to show these, these guys are like hypocrites and, and they're not good guys. I kind of think of them like Adam 12 on uh, from hell. <laughs> Bad dude. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll treat her nice in some aspects, but then totally be terrible to her in another, you know. So, um, and then I wanted to add, you know, there's another character that shows up that uh, in the next chapter that, that kind of comes to her rescue at the end uh, with these bad guys. So, <laughs> kind of so, scares um them. What was uh, some some of your your role on this? Uh, I know you served kind of as like the the bouncing like the brainstorm, um, yeah. but like uh, what was some of your influences on this and and, and your role? Uh, I mean, definitely um, advising him, um, like uh, just basically like does this work sort of thing. Yeah. Um, help you know a lot of the help collective the is, yeah the layout. Um, do I the do the uploading yeah. um, and. Um, just uh you know uh, editing and things like that yeah i it's i'm i'm almost barely kind of hands off because i'm usually busy with ap yeah but, um, <laughs> yeah like i'm always busy we were one. talking backstage i was like you two are just yeah. pumping out work left and yeah. right <laughs> yeah uh, and there's always more down the line yeah <laughs> yeah telling me i should take a break like maybe you two should take a day off or two you know it, it, i am uh, gonna go on a holiday hiatus with melting yeah. pot riot while i work on some more commissions and mm -hmm. i have a i have a uh, oh, yeah. a trans themed punk comic uh, this will be a graphic novel that I'm working with Freaktown Comics with, mm -hmm. and that's for um, that's going to be published 20, within the next few years. Okay, yeah, like so that's exciting. Or something? Yeah, 2027, 20, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. How yeah, many so issues definitely. are you looking at uh, having the Melting Pot Riot be? That where I'm not quite sure uh, exactly where it's going to fall, but it is going to be a finished story, and we will get to find out about you know what all happens at the end and what mm -hmm. happens to characters. There'll be a, there'll be a little background on how everyone fared through the years and, and things like that, because I wanted that to have, the only one we don't know ever what happened to is Charlie. <laughs> as a drifter, he just drifted somewhere yeah. off. Like Puerto Montes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just disappears. Yeah, he could be some 80 year old drifter that we, <laughs> that we haven't yeah. seen yet. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. probably be just a smooth talking guy in, yeah, exactly. in his eighties too, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh, what's next for Diamond Comics? Like, you know, what are you two working on? What what, what can we expect from you in the future? Uh, I'm working oh. on American Prince number seven, the official number seven. Um, and mm -hmm. then the, oh, I've already started working on a Christmas story, <laughs> story with them. Yeah. Because the Halloween did so well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to come up with this Christmas one as well. Yeah. And so I've already started working on that stuff. Then I'm yeah. going to go on a brief hiatus, redo the coloring on issues uh, one through six. Yeah. And so they're all uniform with the new style. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm hoping to finish uh, the Becoming Henry series of, um, of uh, that's in graphic novel. We are moving to global comics yes. for, for that too. So that's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, and then our Halloween anthology was so successful. We're going to do yeah. a new one. So we're going to we'll be putting out a, uh, uh, an advertisement to get people yeah. uh, if they the want to collaborate. You know, they're, they're welcome to come aboard with a scary story. You know. yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. That is so oh, yeah. awesome. Almost 2,000 yeah. views on that um, wow. anthology, and we were blown yeah. away. <laughs> it's our huge. It was just like it was huge, huge. Yeah, it was like our biggest release to date. It was yeah. really that's exciting. awesome. Congratulations, <laughs> you two. Yeah, so thank bad. you. 
<laughs> See, I saw it as good art, you know, we were, we were learning, you know, it was, yeah. it was very much, we were learning. So, so there was a lot of mistakes in it. Hey, well, that but tells you sometimes it's art's not good. always like, you know, yeah. all that matters. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. the heart is, is the biggest part, you know, yeah. that sells people. Exactly. It was yeah. huge. So, yep. We're yeah. going to do it again next Halloween. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> No, that is awesome. So I appreciate you two coming on the podcast, breaking down the melting pot, right? Everyone watching right here is the link to watch it or excuse me, to uh, check it out, read it for free. Um, all, of the, all the issues so far are free to read, right? Yes. 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 So be sure to check that out. So uh, real quick before we end things, Ob, mm -hmm. you've been on the show. You know the drill. Jay, you're yeah. new, though. So yeah. uh, at this part of the show, we always like asking uh, for a piece of advice. It's it's my turn to kind of have you give us a little bit of something. So uh, with that being said, for anyone that's out there that is struggling just getting started with their comic, uh, what type of advice would you offer them to help them get motivated to go? I think sometimes just kind of got to get in there and play. Mm -hmm. It's it's like playing. So you, mm -hmm. just, you just start drawing even it's on paper you know or, or writing something down to so the loosest little idea the loosest little outline you, you can come up with and then go okay can i see this you know and, and and just go from there but i think a lot of it has to do with just having fun and playing because the more you play the more you draw the better you're gonna get yeah. mm -hmm. you know so you just yeah. and the more you write the better you're gonna get that's why we we don't mind as much drawing as we do because we're having fun and we're playing yes. with our imaginary friends and we're getting better each time we do and we're getting better each time yeah yes well, that is so i learn awesome. something new every time i do something if i work on something i try something new and i and i learn something new so i continue to grow and so it's it's fun to just continue to grow now the worst advice i ever got was from a comic book artist that was my my mentor he said not to write and draw i have to choose one and i said yeah. no <laughs> i'm not gonna do both <laughs> and, yeah. and i don't regret it. i think if you can do yeah, both exactly. people that's sure. so awesome you know self-edit or have someone bounce it off you know yeah. like we do to keep mm -hmm. you from getting indulgent yeah we stop each other from getting <laughs> indulgent <laughs> we're like don't do that <laughs> yeah you know, no, i appreciate that, that. that that's some awesome advice all of jay thank you so much for swinging by thank you um, for, for having us absolutely diamond comics in the house let's go uh that link is going to be in the description as well give them a follow um any other social media platforms that we can find you on um, we have a Facebook page. Facebook. I think it's under Dunlop Twins. Yes. Um, we're on Instagram, but not very Instagram, much. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, neither. It's like you, you have it just to have it, but it's like you yeah. always forget to update it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You really just uh, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter. Um, yeah. All right. Facebook. And then once again, right here is that link. Be sure to check it out. Everyone, it is free and you have yes. nothing to lose. Be sure to share that as well on Twitter and Facebook. Word mouth is 100% free and getting as many eyes on pos yep. as possible yep. to yep. help this hit, uh, what, 2,000 views? Let's break that as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We'd love well, it. Everyone, yeah. This has been an awesome Monday night. I hope you all have right. a great time. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly. Yeah.